Hello Rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbital's Rocket Shop where we continue working on the world's only crewed, crowdfunded space rocket speak up. In today's episode we'll be taking the first and scariest step towards brazing our complete coaxial swirl injectors for our liquid rocket engines. Besides that, we'll guide you through our updated quality assurance measures to reduce our chances of seeing engine rich combustion in our upcoming static fires. So enter full screen and enjoy some rocket engineering. This is uh, the first injector now that is ready for the final production step. Uh, the first injector in our new injector technology using these swirl nozzles. This one has already been pasted up with uh, the silver solar paste and if I extremely gently just flip it over. This is what it's gonna look like from the inside of our combustion chamber. So these are of course only some of our, um, our swirl inject elements. We still have two different kinds of swirl elements, the stainless steel ones from digital metal and the brass ones from, uh, from hearing. We're just doing the, uh, we're just type shooting the process here using the stainless steel injector elements first because those are the ones that are most heat tolerant. So if we're gonna make any baby step errors with this soldering process, it might better be the, uh, the stainless steel ones. It's also easier to fix afterwards. So all the injector elements have been uh, flow tested and characterized. In the center of this particular injector, we have a lux rich region, and then we're adding a fuel rich uh, circumference to this. So it might, um, it might give us a slight penalty on the performance uh, efficiency. On the other hand, we should be able to run our, um, our chamber wall at a lower combustion temperature. So this one would be the safe bet, so to say. So this one is, uh, is pretty much ready to go into the, uh, into the ceramics oven for final soldering now. Let's see how it turns out. This is the big now. Um, we've got the first of our injectors all pasted up with uh, silver solder paste. It's in the vacuum chamber and all we need to do now is to just close it up and then uh, start up the ceramic oven and then hopefully we'll have a perfect brand new injector when we're done in a few hours. So here we go. We'll go over the results of our first injector brazing in our next episode, so be sure to subscribe, but in the meanwhile, let's rewind back a little bit and talk how we got to this point in the first place. Having this many individual elements comprise our injectors means we need to be sure each of them is performing normal, and we would like to take you through our upgraded process of doing that. We are forging ahead with our uh, swirl nozzle flow mapping right here behind me at this point. What you see is uh, the little water flow test stand, as we call it. And that one received a very much appreciated upgrade just uh, over the past three weeks. Um, we, have these, uh, we have two different sets of uh, swell nozzles. Uh, we are intending to use those in our new injector technology, the one that goes into the BPM 100 as well. We have two different kind of these duplex swell nozzles from, uh, from Digital Metal. A, uh, a 3D printed uh, method. And then we have uh, also from uh, Hering, uh, a very nice uh, German uh, corporation, which provided us with a lot of uh, these swirl nozzles uh, made in brass. So we are gonna install all of those nozzles and then we're gonna run all of them in six individual injectors for the next hot fire test coming up. So. But before we get to that point, we need to flow map these. Um, there might be some slight uh, manufacturing tolerances so that one nozzle gives a little more flow than another one. And we just need to map them individually to make sure we populate the injectors with similar nozzles with similar flow characteristics. So right now we are testing every single one of these uh, swirl injectors 
uh, but this time we're doing it in an automated setup in the small water flow test stand. Before this, we had to uh, do some, some, some valve actuation. We had to do it manually. Uh, we had to read the scale manually, and there was a lot of, uh, of post-processing uh, data work, uh, even after a full day of testing. And that kind of took its toll when we were looking at something like 120, 30, 40 nozzles that we need to flow map. So over the course of two and a half weeks, it was upgraded. So now, at this time, uh, we simply just spend our time uh, swapping out the nozzles. And then in between, all we have to do is press a button. And then on the laptop and in the log files, all the uh, relevant parameters come out for each uh, swell nozzle tied to their individual serial numbers. We also want to do this to make sure we don't get any outliers, some freak uh, event where one of the nozzles uh, provide a, a completely different flow, which could result in a hotspot and actually damaging or destroying an engine. We don't want that. So if we ever do have a problem after this uh, hot fire test, we'll be able to go back and look at the, the uh, configuration of each injector and see if we could correlate something of what happened with the particular flow of the nozzles that were in that region. So we're doing it right this time. So this is a crash course into our little water flow stand. I'll just go over the major components with you. So here, an old aluminum tank. We actually used it as an oxidizer tank back in the old days. It's good for a couple of hundred liters of water and we just give it a low pressure, say four or five bar, just using a normal compressor. So we have also here a large electrically actuated ball valve and that one basically decides when pressure will be available for the rest of the test setup here. Then we have a branching out here, a couple of flow meters, and then this uh, steampunk uh, box we have here in the middle is, um, is a couple of actuators for the uh, solenoid valves we have further down the line here. So what basically happens is that when the system starts up, um, we put in a new nozzle, then basically Scott just pushes a button, everything else happens automatically, and then it just primes in the nozzle, and then it uh, opens up a solenoid valve for either the fuel or the oxidizer side, and then the scale down here has been, uh, first of all, upgraded and modified a bit in the firmware, and secondly, the readout from that scale goes right into the uh, software on the computer. So. It opens up the valve for a specific time, fuel side first or oxidizer first, and vice versa, and then it measures how much water goes into the bucket on each run. And once it's done, a couple of, of a tests on either side, calculates the flow coefficients for each side of the nozzle, and saves it in a log file. So, easy peasy. That is all for now, so as always, thank you for watching and supporting. If you don't want to miss any of our future updates, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so we can see you next time when we get one step closer to space. The reason we're getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you enjoy watching these insider videos on building a space program and you would like to become an even bigger part of it, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsum.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation. We all do this for free in our spare time, so you'd be surprised how much every little bit helps. And thank you if you feel like what we do and share is interesting.